Hello and welcome back to the third tutorial. This time we look at damping function theory. So let me start by opening the notebook. We name our notebook T and we import Pyron Pyron import project and we create a project named T. Again we can navigate into the project folder, let's go here, and then we can open the structure, and this time we just create a symbol, a simple primitive cell. So can check here. It's just a single atom. The reason being that T of T uh, scales cubically with the number of atoms, and therefore we want to keep the number of atoms as low as possible. So now we can play our T of T job. And we use the job function. So there are a lot of job types available as we saw before. T of T calls would be Gaussian, G pole, um, strings or in-house T of T code, and then we also support last. Here we're going to select the swings code um, because it's available as open source, and it's also a plain wave T of T code, similar to last. And let me just T of T. The two important parameters for a plane wave DFT code are the energy cutoff, this defines like how many plane waves are considered, and also the k point mesh. So it's always important when you do DFT calculations to check how your results are changing and modifying the energy cutoff or the k point mesh and turn. Uh, to see that if you converge, that it's not just a numerical error inside your DFT calculation. So to now determine the equilibrium volume, what we're going to do is we calculate the energy at different volumes around the equilibrium volume, and then fit a polynomial to see how it stabilizes. And to, to see where, where the equilibrium volume is. Just doing a basic minimization like we did for the interchange potentials won't be successful, in particular as this. Mesh isn't constant, but we will see this in more detail uh, in the next moment. Again, we can assign a structure to a DFT job, just like we did for the lens components as well. Good. So to calculate different volumes, similar to what we did before, we are calculating the same job for, for different potentials. We first create a list of parameters we want to iterate over. So here we want to iterate the strains. So we'll create a Lin space of strains, creating a lint space, and import numpy, p, and in lint space. And let's say we do it from minus 0 0.05, 0 0.05, and we do 11 strains. Right, so this is now the list of strains. This is strain list. And we now do it. A small loop of this for strain, strain list. For each strain, we're going to create a new job, create a strain job. This job is created from the RDT job using it as a template. So I can do the two function, um, new database entry is again set to false. And the new job name. The job name we make it in a way that it contains a strain. So we can just use space underscore name here and then we add the string of the strain. And as it's maybe it's better to have one plus the strain, and then we replace it, place the dot. With an underscore, just to have like um, names which, which match the Python syntax. To dominate this nicer, so like this. Okay, good. The second part is we need a structure. So for this, we can create a copy of our existing structure. And then we apply a strain on this structure. Strain. 
and that's a strain that we created. And we assign the structure to our job. It's important in the structure of the updated strain. This one. And then we can execute our Sorry for me running through this. And the DFT calculations take a little longer, so now we have time to talk about what we're doing. And you see on the left, the calculations are now created, each of them having a working directory and the actual apply file, which stores all the output. And then we can look at this. Good. So it's only half done. Um, and then once we have this, we will collect all the uh, output data in a Python table again, and then use a polynomial to fit it to determine the equilibrium value. Again, you could also send these calculations to the background using the um, server run mode and then setting it to a uh, manual. So you see now we have the 12 there. We now look at our job table. We see all these jobs finished successfully, so we can create our table. So we create our table object. We again define a filter function. Which takes job as an input. And we change true with the prefix and job name. Job name. We assign this filter function to our table object. And then in addition, we add some more functions. Here we just use the templates because these functions are already predefined. So we take the job, take uh, the volume, and uh, get energy charge. And then we can run this table object and get a data table error. Get data frame. Oops, no zero inside there. And so good. So the important part here is really all codes convert the output files into the same generic format. So let me briefly demonstrate this here. So I will just remove a single job. Remote. And six, five. And now, if we look into job output, output slash generic, you find here that the same output is already there. Right? So, as all codes store basically the same output properties, we can build something like data frame and then the prime table object to collect this data frame. So we will just copy this data frame to a different variable. And this. And now we can import the matplotlib library to plot this data. So as before I import the plot we will have the file plot and now we want to plot the volume over the energy, the energy of the volume. Let's run the volume. And then we want to this energy charge. Oh, we should also add again our labels. Let's do the X label. We should put the volume. And the creation more label to go into a bit more detail we can now fit this using the polynomial fit and numpy so we just take the same data set so numpy errors values values we do a third order fit. So this is the fits. And now we do a 
für die Kohle, so wird die Polynomie auch das gut. Das ist function Good. And now we want to calculate the um, derivative of this polynomial of our fit. And then from this derivative we want to do this. Oh, and now we get two roots. One which is outside our volume range, and then in there, we also have a third order polynomial. So that's definitely possible. So we can now fit this. So we say this is our volume roots. And we now want to filter those. So the volume roots are, should be filtered by two conditions. The first condition is the volume should be smaller than the maximum. Our list, and at the same time, it should be larger than the mean. So let's do this here. And then it should be larger. And now we are left with a single one, so we can also add no brackets here. Just get single value, and this is our equilibrium volume. We can now include our equilibrium volume as well as the fit in our plot. So to do so, I just copy the lines from above. Um, we now maybe want to for the volume space a bit more points, right? So we have the volume space where we take the volume space should be defined from the minimum to the maximum. From the minimum and the maximum, which is 100 points, and now we want to calculate the volume for this fit, for this volume space, and the volume space also here. Now we can maybe make it a bit more nice on the dotted line here, since we're having just little dots, as a label. So the label would be relation, and here the label would be fit, fit, and then also the legend, and we can exclude. Okay, so this is how we, this part, now we can also add our line, and we have to reline, so we have the whole of here. And let's see that the color should be red. Alright, so we should now see where the equilibrium volume is located and how the calculations are distributed. And maybe to say a very brief word about the precision of DFT, we can now do one step further. We can look at the energy difference of the fit and then subtracting our. Um, Subtracting our fit from our original energy surface. This is what we do here. We want to add values again. So this is the calculation minus fit. And then we can let's just keep the equilibrium volume where you are with this to the um, we maybe want to have a, a line to show what we're, we're working at. You can now see this looks very systematic, right? So it looks nearly like a fourth order term that we're missing. So this means we our polynomial wasn't precise enough to cover the, all the features. So we can now basically go here and increase our polynomial to a fourth order polynomial, then compare it. And now we have a much higher, more, more noisy curve. And that's really the issue of DFT calculations, right? So these kind of fluctuations in the curve, um, they, they really make it hard to do systematic conversions to, to find this mean. And these are like the plane wave jumps in our DFT calculations. Okay, 
without going into more details on DFT calculations and the, the specific features. Um, the important part is just to remind you we always have to do convergence checks for DFT calculations. But there's one more technical feature I would like to mention. And this is for these kind of default calculations like the energy volume curves, we provide so called um, master jobs, which can execute multiple calculations within one job. So here we do the Mernigan master job so that uh, we take our job DFT and we just apply the job create job function on this object and then we select the Mernigan. Run. And, and this will basically is, is a driver for these calculations. So if you look at the input, you can also define the number of points. We can set our fit order. So I don't know if I know the fourth order for the menu. And we can set our volume range, which we have modified. Okay, it would be nice to just use it plus minus five percent. In, in the volume range, so we also update this one. And then we can directly execute these calculations. So this now again creates a new object, and within this object, start the calculations for all the different strains. So that's very handy to have this ability already centralized in one object and to build much more complex simulation problems. And then the advantage of this is also like function like the default plotting is already available there. And that's what we are going to use also in the next tutorial, then to build a more complex protocol and to calculate free energies. And so let's wait just another minute for the calculations to finish. Okay, all the jobs are finished, so we can now plot the calculation results. We can see, see our Mulligan, and we can get from the Mulligan output. Sorry, I should use the edge brackets. Already all the equilibrium volume and other properties. So if you now have more calculations, you could again create a parent table just collecting. Um, these calculations for these parameters. And so it's already built in and it allows you really to form these building blocks which then create the, the next calculation. And with this I guess I, we, we can close the session and we quickly add headlines what we are doing. So the uh, T calculation is the focus of this topic. We created our template job Job template. We then use to this template job to loop over different strains. We strains. We again use the parent table to collect all the data. Um, this here on the table. We did a very brief excursion in DFT in general and then the different plotting and to understand where the fluctuations or where are the issues with unconverged DFT calculations, DFT convergence. Third chapter. And then and finally introduce the Mernigan job here and basically repeat the calculations. Good. With this, I guess you should be ready for the third exercise. I wish you good luck and then see you later for the fourth tutorial. Thanks a lot.